lithium sulfur batteries. Are they the future of next generation battery technology? Many people think they are. Well, here's an interesting update on a battery that offers up to 300% more energy density. That, my friends, if true, is a game changer. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the channel, all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Fantastic to have you here. We've made more than, I think, about 1,400 videos over the last 11 months. Might even be a year now since we started this channel. Time has gone so quickly. However, one thing I haven't really talked about, and I have talked about lots of different types of batteries, is lithium sulfur batteries. Are they the future? Some people think they are. Is that true? Lithium sulfur batteries, which are lighter, that's pretty big, right? And cheaper than today's batteries, may be the next generation of batteries that we use in electric cars, mobile phones, pretty much in any kind of technology you can imagine. I mean, think about it. Electric flying cars, right? Aeroplanes. These sorts of things could benefit massively from lithium sulfur batteries because why they're lighter and they have the potential to be incredibly energy dense. ScienceDirect.com says that they have the potential to have 2,567 watts per kilo. That is insane. And that would be about eight times more energy dense than any current commercialized batteries on the market. If we could commercialize batteries like that, there would be electric airplanes sitting in your airport tomorrow. It would happen so quickly. Why? The cost of jet fuel is incredibly expensive. The cost of electricity is way, 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 way cheaper. But why hasn't it happened yet? Well, there's some very good reasons. They don't last all that long. So the main attraction of sulfur batteries is that they can store more energy than a similar lithium ion battery. That means they can last substantially longer on a single charge for a lot less weight. They can also be manufactured in plants where lithium ion batteries are made. So it should be relatively straightforward to put them into production, in theory. Rather than using cobalt, which is vulnerable to fragile global supply chains and is expensive, Sulfur batteries would use sulfur, which is a cheap raw material, which is available as a byproduct of the oil industry. Their cost per unit of power would be way cheaper than current batteries on the market. What's going on? What's the holdup? Well, the main problem, they can't be recharged enough times before they fail, which makes them non-commercially viable right now. It's all in the internal chemistry. Right now, charging a lithium sulfur battery causes a buildup of chemical deposits that degrade the cell and shorten its lifespan pretty significantly. What happens is the deposits form in thin tree-like structures called dendrites, which branch up from the lithium anode, the negative electrode inside the battery. The deposits degrade the anode and the electrolyte, which is the medium in which lithium ions shuttle back and forth. This of course reduces the power of the battery and it ends up making a short circuit, potentially causing a flammable electrolyte to catch fire. Now, interestingly, lithium sulfur batteries have been proposed and even investigated since all the way back in 1960. In the 2000s, lithium sulfur batteries reattracted massive interest in the research field owing to their low cost advantages, their high theoretical specific energy of 2,600 watts per kilo, which is unbelievable, and at least three times higher than the theoretical capacity of even solid state batteries right now. Of course, the low cost and the high abundance of sulfur would make these really appealing. Now, interestingly, even back in 2007, Sion, or S-I-O-N Power Corporation, a company in the USA, and Oxus Energy in the UK, made progress towards the commercialization of lithium sulfur batteries with their batteries showing specific energy density of over 360 watt per kilo, which is right at the top end of current battery technology today. However, in recent years, 
huge improvements have been made in the cycling performance of lithium sulfur batteries. But these improvements have been made at, well, the exchange of energy density and process cost. What does this mean? Well, nanostructured sulfur composites based on various types of carbon materials and conducting polymers have driven the specific capacity of sulfur to a level approaching the theoretical value with acceptable cycling efficiency and cycle numbers. However, using these products in batteries, unfortunately, is extremely costly. Well, now there's a German startup claiming it has basically cracked the code, you might say. This startup called Theon is promising a new sulfur battery technology that could help mainstream EVs have 900 plus miles of range. That's nearly 1,500 kilometers of range, and that would be seriously a big time game changer. Now, CEO of the company, Dr. Ulrich Ems, said existing battery technology uses nickel, manganese, and cobalt for the cathode. It's called NMC811 because it has 80% nickel, 10% cobalt, and 10% manganese. Now, just to clear this up, this does not apply to all batteries. This doesn't apply to lithium ion phosphate batteries. This doesn't apply to some variants of lithium ternary batteries. Not all batteries use this exact chemistry. This is just what's used in NMC811 chemistries. He goes on, in our case, we replace this NMC811 with sulfur. So we have no nickel, no manganese, no cobalt, and we replace the current collective folds of copper and aluminium with graphene. So we have no aluminium and no copper in our cells either. The only things we have in our cells are lithium metal foil, sulfur, and carbon. Now, there's also some interesting EV battery research going on at Drexel University, which has promised similar benefits to these batteries from this German startup, which has some interesting claims. Getting away from a dependence on lithium and other materials that are expensive and difficult to extract from the earth is a vital step for the development of batteries and expanding our ability to use renewable energy sources, said Drexel's Viva Calera PhD, George B. Francis Chair Professor in the College Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering, who leads this project. She goes on to say that developing a viable lithium sulfur battery opens a number of pathways to replacing these materials. Now, I don't know why she's saying that it's going to replace lithium it's not these batteries still use lithium so lithium is still part of this equation however the interesting thing here is that obviously this startup theon from germany and also drexel university both claim they figured out how to increase the number of cycles without drastically increasing the cost of lithium sulfur batteries so could they be a thing based on this research i'm seeing now absolutely they could be but the reality is, I'm not getting enough information to fully understand what procedures are needed. What are they using in place? What is the real longevity of these batteries now? There's not enough disclosure of that information yet to be able to make a concrete decision of whether or not I can tell you that these are a battery technology of the future. Now, there are lots of people talking about sulfur batteries everywhere, all over YouTube, claiming it will save the day and be so cheap that batteries will be, well, at marginal cost, right? In addition, they'll have 10 times more power. Really sounds like a miracle, doesn't it? Unfortunately, right now, a serious lack of details from these companies, and there's many of them making similar claims to these companies, to both the university in Drexel and this startup in Germany, make it seem a bit dubious. Without full transparency, it's hard for us to really know what's going on. Now, even within traditional lithium ion chemistries, there's lots of batteries with 600 watt per kilo right now. They just don't last long enough to be commercially viable, which is of course the problem with sulfur batteries. The only thing is, this research here does seem intriguing and it only takes one company to change the game for everyone, permanently. Could this be it? Realistically, it could happen at any time, at any moment, anywhere. Any company could get this technology, could basically buy out one of these companies, some big company like Tesla or BMW or Rematch or Porsche or someone. You never know. They could fall upon this and next year release some amazing batteries. Although that said, I think it'll take a few years to commercialize. So that's probably not likely. 
That said, you never know. At some point, I do think it's very likely someone will discover the right chemistry technology and be able to commercialize it on a massive scale because sulfur batteries just too, they do just seem like they may hold the answer for the future. Now, one of the key things that I haven't pointed out yet about these batteries is that they do need less lithium than standard traditional lithium batteries. That is one advantage. But for me, the most important thing here is, and this is the reason I do think they'll eventually be commercialized, is the energy density. Having the kind of energy density these batteries can have will definitely change the world of aviation in so many ways. Airplanes would no longer be using jet fuel and the range of electric cars could be well over 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers, meaning range anxiety would never be a thing ever again. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Have a great day. Bye-bye.